to say inflation would explode is to understate it. Now, I've said for years, I thought the end game was hyperinflation. And I think we're about to, I, I think everybody's going to recognize soon we're going to have hyperinflation. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for September 18th through September 25th, 2023, while supplies last. This week we feature two different specials, 10 bar bundles of Nordic Mint 5 ounce bars at $1.99 over spot per ounce, and quarter ounce gold eagles at $59.99 over melt. First, when you purchase 10 or more 5 ounce Nordic Mint bars, you pay only $1.99 over spot per ounce. Three nines fine silver, these are priced lower than almost anything else other than 1,000 ounce bars, but with the far better liquidity of the 5 ounce size. The Gold Eagle was first released in 1986 and has been one of the most popular gold bullion coins in the world, providing incredible recognizability and investor trust. The Quarter Ounce Eagle is additionally sought after for its high degree of flexibility and liquidity. Like the One Ounce Eagle, the Quarter Eagle is 22 karat gold strengthened with copper. Its one quarter of a troy ounce of gold comes 40 to a tube, 2,000 to a box, and it's available at just $59.99 over melt while supplies last. Both our specials this week are IRA eligible. If you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us, and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend Bob Moriarty, Marine, Naval Aviator, and Financial Author. Bob, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure. Well, it's great to have you. I did want to get an update on, I know you've called for an imminent market crash within the next six to eight weeks. Um, your perspective on what we're seeing right now and what is keeping you convicted about that forecast? Uh, every time I turn around, I see something else. I see another black swan and, and I think the forecast is going to be good. Now, we are in the six-day week envelope right now, and I, I may extend it, uh, but we're seeing some very scary things in the bond market. We're seeing scary things from the Fed. We're seeing scary things from the Russians. We're seeing scary things from Azerbaijan and Armenia, and we're seeing scary things for from Ukraine. So there's a lot of black swans, and one of these days, one of them's going to take a crap. Now, in particular, what did you want to expand for our viewers, maybe one or two things that um, you're looking at right now? Well, uh, did you see what Russia announced yesterday as far as gasoline and diesel going to the EU, they shut it off, okay? No more gasoline, no more diesel to the EU. And of course, we're going into the heating season soon. Uh, that easily could be catastrophic. Now, it's really hard to tell who's telling the truth and who's lying, because over the last year, there's actually been greater exports of Russian fuel to the EU than before uh, the Ukraine invasion. So it's hard to tell who's telling the truth, but if in fact the Saudis are decreasing uh, the amount of oil they're producing and Russia shuts off diesel and gasoline, Europe's in deep serious trouble. And why do you think they'd be doing that? I know the oil price is rising right now, so that can just probably be bullish for the oil price and, as you mentioned, bad for anyone looking to use energy right now. The EU and NATO, the 31 nations of NATO, are waging war against Russia. So for Russia to shut off fuel to the EU is just another military move. Uh, but it's one of, of in incredible importance. It could give us $200 a barrel of oil. And that obviously is going to have a 
huge impact on inflation. Um, can you expand on what you think is going to happen there? I'm glad you brought up inflation. Do you remember the agreement with the UPS drivers? How much are the UPS drivers costing UPS now? But each UPS driver costs UPS $170,000 a year. 70000 in benefits, 100000 in salary. The uh, three major car companies, the UAW is on strike right now. The UAW is asking for a 46% increase in wages and to go to a 32-hour week. And to, to say inflation would explode is to understate it. Now, I've said for years, I thought the end game was hyperinflation. And I think we're about to, I, I think everybody's going to recognize soon we're going to have hyperinflation. And then you've got the Fed turning around and the Fed says we're, we're going to continue QT longer. There will be one more increase this year and perhaps two next year. Uh, they're going to blow the system up. It's that, that simple. Too much money was pumped in the system. The inflation genie escaped, and there was no putting it back in the bottle. Now, the Fed meeting was obviously this week, and the Fed paused, and it seems like they're looking for a soft landing. But what you're saying is that's not really possible right now. When you jump out of an airplane at 100,000 feet with no parachute, there is no soft landing. It, it seems like, at least if you look at the official numbers right now, it's it's looking good for them when you see inflation coming down and um, they're raising interest rates. And it seems like we are seeing the soft landing. But kind of as we started this interview, it seems like you're you're looking kind of for, for that black swan to happen, the oil price rising and, and possibly a market crash coming soon. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're very near $100 a barrel on oil. We have not cured inflation. And, and Fed is smoking some kind of really great weed because everything they say is, is totally nuts. But they're going to keep raising rates until the system blows. And it is going to blow. The two largest Chinese uh, real estate companies have both defaulted. We're, we're on the, the verge of total chaos. Uh, to the extent that more so than any time in my life, the government is lying about everything. So what you read in the newspaper, what you hear and on the news is fiction. It really seems like something could be coming to a head here. Um, I know other uh, forecasters are looking for something to break by the end of the year. The commercial real estate, as you mentioned, could be it. Um, I, I know like with the rising interest rates, we're seeing a lot of things break in the economy. Banks back in back in March there. Um, what other areas of the econ economy are under stress because of these uh, increased interest rates? Well, well everything. OK, we've we've had the fastest move, the fastest rise in interest rates in history. And literally in the last week or two, interest rates have spiked. And if you examine how much it costs to buy normal house now, uh, anyone who thinks they're going to get the price they were asking a year or two is delusional. The, the cost of, of interest is now two thirds of the total cost of a mortgage. So, so uh, the Fed can, can talk soft landing all they want, but there's not going to be a soft landing. $100 a barrel oil is serious and five, six, seven percent interest rates on mortgages, which is actually very low interest rates. When, when I was young, the first place I ever bought, I think uh, interest rates were eight and a half or nine percent, and they went to 18 percent. And they could easily do that again. If anyone thinks there's going to be a soft landing, I think they're delusional. 
And it just kind of surprises me in some way that, you know, back in March and April, we saw these bank failures because interest rates were rising and the value of their assets were falling. But it's kind of just been silent. We had PacWest being taken over, but um, there hasn't been a lot of news in the area. Is that because of the Fed? Is it the Fed uh, repro program or where they the, they can sell back there? They kind of you know borrow money against their treasuries at full price or why haven't we heard a lot uh, since April? They, they have done nothing to cure the problem, and they've made the problem significantly worse. The bank failures have not ended. They've just started. Uh, it, it's going to go curvilinear, literally, suddenly, this week, next week, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, and, and everybody's going to act very surprised. The Fed is now lying about everything and when we see uh the gold and silver markets right now it seems like you know not a lot of action there i know the retailers you know ourselves uh included aren't seeing a whole lot of a uh, demand for physical precious metals um where do you see that heading uh, as we go into the end of the year this uh, stock crash and possibly more bank failures uh that's a really good question of course you've got your finger on the pulse and what's interesting to me is that the price of gold and the price of silver has tumbled. I mean, we're in, in March of 2020, we had $12 silver. We got $24 silver today. So silver and gold are actually holding up very well. However, the sentiment for the resource stocks is the worst that I've seen in 25 years. And that means there's a lot of opportunity. And when it turns, and, and of course, if, if the bond market crashes and the stock market crashes, people are going to look for uh, a safe haven, and that's going to be gold and silver. But the fact that gold and silver have not gone down while uh, resource stocks have, have been absolutely clobbered is an interesting observation. And I do know you do extensive analysis on different resource companies. What are you seeing right now for why are they so depressed if gold and silver are, I mean, they're not too exciting right now, but they are holding up pretty well. No, they're holding up great. I mean, we've got good prices for gold and silver, but you're seeing total panic in, in the resource market, which I, I always think it's a good thing. And the next major move is going to be up. But when everybody hates gold stocks, that's the time to buy. I think it goes back to what you've said in the past as well. You, you kind of just have to look at the chart as if the price is down, it's probably a good buy. Obviously, it's a bit more complicated than that. But um, yeah. 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 No, no, it's not. It's not complicated. OK, if you walk into the BMW dealer and the car that you want, it's 100,000 euros and you come back a week later, the same car is 80,000 euros. Is that a good deal or a bad deal? I, I happen to think it's a good deal. Yeah. And people who are already invested in those, I mean, if they really, truly bought with conviction, they should just be glad because they can buy more at a lower price here. Well, they can, but when people see the value of their portfolios go down, they literally panic. Uh, one of the most important things I've said in one of my investment books is stocks go up and stocks go down. And believe it or not, everybody wants to think, well, gee, you know, stocks should, should go up, but they should never go down. And it's bullshit. They go up and they go down. If they go down, they get better. Definitely. And I did want to ask a question here. Uh, this is a question from a viewer about uh, gold and silver. And I always like these questions because they're a bit controversial. I hope you don't uh, mind that. And you know, obviously, there might be a debate in the comments here. But uh, the question is about the COMEX and the price of precious metals and also JP Morgan trading. Um, so he's wanting to know if precious metals are manipulated. We've covered this in the past, but kind of and you have said you know um in in general they're not suppressed if that's my um 
understanding of your view. But he says, what about like the JP Morgan charges, right? They settled cases for spoofing uh, metals and paid, you know, many millions of dollars in fines. Your perspective on that? Okay, uh, and and that's a really good question. I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to do it. Let's talk about manipulation. All financial markets are manipulated by everyone all of the time. So if somebody tells you gold and silver are manipulated, they're really lying to you because they're not saying that everything is manipulated. They're saying gold and silver is manipulated and inferring that nothing else is manipulated. All financial markets are manipulated, and they're manipulated all of the time. So let's go back to common logic. In August of 1999, gold was 252, and it's 20, uh, what is it? It's 1930 today. Was gold suppressed from 1999 until today? Using common logic, it doesn't, I mean, that's quite a run. So it seems like it would be hard to make that case. Well, it would be impossible to make that case. You could make a case that it's been manipulated higher, but you couldn't make a case that it's been suppressed. Likewise, silver got to $4.02 an ounce in November of 2001. When I said it was at a bottom, and it's 24 now, was silver suppressed from $4 to 24? And, and it would be ludicrous to say that. Now, let's go back to J.P. Morgan. If all financial markets are manipulated and J.P. Morgan got caught manipulating the price of gold and silver, that, okay, that, that just proved my point. Uh, yes, they get charged millions of dollars, but that was more of a face-saving move on the part of the SEC and the TSX, not the TSX, CFTC, because there are so many people screaming suppression and manipulation. But in fact, what people were doing is they were clipping five cents or 10 cents off the price of gold, they, they were using high frequency trading, which happens to be totally illegal, okay? But it's 80% of the market today. So they, they went after JP Morgan for gold and silver, but they didn't go after JP Morgan for the high frequency trading in shares. And anybody that's bought a 10 or $15 stock and had to chase it higher, knows that people are using high frequency trading and it's illegal and they get away with it. And it's really no big deal. Now, kind of playing devil's advocate here, I, I mean, first, before before I do that, I think it's important to distinguish between price manipulation and suppression and spoofing in and of itself is not, doesn't necessarily mean suppression. Spoofing can be up or down. Not at all, and that's a good point. Because J.P. Morgan was not driving the price down. They were driving the price up, and they were driving the price down, and, and they were doing it for pennies. What it, Was it illegal? Yes. Was it wrong? Yes. Is it something that's always going on? Yes. Is it a big deal? No, I don't think so. I think a, a lot of people, though, argue that, um, and even as... I would assume that you would say that precious metals right now at the current prices are undervalued. So yes, they've increased over the last 10 or 20 years, more like 20 years, um, but they should have increased more. And and we know that just because they're undervalued. Actually not, okay. There's a, a Australian who runs a website called Gold Charts or Us, or yeah, gold charts are us, and it's an excellent website. And he's got charts of about 300 different commodities compared to gold, silver, gold, platinum, platinum to silver. He, he's got all these charts, and one of the charts that he has is the relative prices of nine different metals, and that's uh, 
silver, gold, lead, zinc, aluminum, uh, copper. I don't know what the others are. It's either seven or nine. And you, you can go back to 1900 and pick every single time frame. And for virtually every single time frame, gold and silver have gone up more than lead and zinc and aluminum and copper. Okay. So, in fact, if you're saying gold and silver are manipulated, uh, lead and zinc and copper and aluminum are actually more manipulated and more suppressed. The price of gold and silver today is actually reasonable in historical terms. If you compare it to the price of housing, the price of cars, the price of stamps, uh, the price of wages, the price of going to, to college, uh, gold and silver have actually held up very well. They're not cheap in relative terms. They are cheap in relative terms if the financial system comes unglued, which is my belief, and we've discussed this many times, the financial system is in the process of collapsing. The Western debt-based system is in the process of collapsing. The American empire is collapsing. And when that happens, you're gonna want to be in, in the safest form of something real, and, and that's gold and silver. All right. And I believe we've covered this one before, but if you had any new insights, it's a bit more specific than what we've asked you before. Uh, still on the topic of precious metals, um, your perspective on gold and silver becoming illegal. And is there any way that people can uh, protect against that? For example, owning like only U.S. minted coins? OK, uh, it, it's a good question because there are so many pieces of it that nobody talks about and they should. If the banks close tomorrow and you've got physical gold and silver, are you going to be able to buy food and gasoline? No, not with your debit card or credit card or anything. Yeah. No, you're not going to. Here's what's going to happen. When you start talking about the government making gold and silver illegal, and they certainly could do that, and I think they would really like to do that, you're inferring that the government has all the power. And that's absolute rubbish. The government's not the, the, the entity that's going to get us out of this problem. The government's the entity that got us into this problem. And what's going to happen is people are going to do whatever makes the most sense. Now, if you go to hyperinflation in Germany in 1922, you could take a British sovereign or a U.S. $5 gold piece and you could buy a nice apartment. And I think you're going to see that again. But I am a firm believer in the power of the people. And as much as the government wants to control people, and we're certainly see it there, they want to go to COVID 2.0. Okay, we now know that everything that you said about COVID 1.0 was a total lie. The vaccines don't work, the masks don't work. Fauci had five different recommendations on wearing the mask. Social distancing was what's meaningless. They want to go to COVID 2.0 because they want control. But governments never have the power they think they have and would like to have, and, and I'll be real candid, when, when I go on a trip, I take, I, I'm gonna call it two or three ounces of gold in small coins, uh, 10th uh, Kruger Rands or 10th Maples. And should the banks close, and should I want to get home and got, get on an airliner to get home, as I climb the steps to the airplane, I'm going to be tossing out um, one-tenth ounce gold coins, okay? I know I'm getting gold coins. Uh, my, my belt buckles are all gold, 
that saved a lot of Germans and Italians lives uh, prior to World War II and during World War II because uh, uh, a gold belt buckle is just as good as a passport. Very good points there. And we do have uh, one last viewer's question here. How will a central bank digital currency impact the stock market, if at all? I, I think that uh, central bank digital currencies are, are so fatally flawed, I, I don't think it can ever work. Again, it's the government believing that it has power that it doesn't have. Now, let's, let's talk for a minute uh, about Vietnam, okay? When I was in Vietnam, I was an F-4 pilot, and we used to go in, out in flights of two aircraft. We would carry 10 500-pound bombs or six 500-pound bombs and four and eight bombs, and, and we would drop them on enemy uh, troops that were almost inevitably in contact with American troops, and we believed uh, everything that we were told by the government. And then I got into forward air control, and I was flying the little single-engine Cessna and flew, I don't know, 500 airstrikes, 50 or 100 naval gunfire missions, uh, hundreds of artillery missions. And what I realized after being there a year and a half Every, everything that we were doing was a total waste of time. We believed we had power, but we didn't have the power that we thought we have. Uh, governments believe they have power, but you can look at Ukraine. Uh, any rational person who, who does any education about the Russian-Ukraine conflict would understand the sanctions have been a total disaster for Europe. 500,000 businesses in Germany have gone out of business. They've gone bankrupt because of the cost of energy. And the effects of the sanctions are just starting. And you would think, well, these people are leaders and they're all educated and they're all very knowledgeable and they're all very smart. No, they're not. They're idiots, okay? The Germans allowed the United States to bomb Nord Stream which was the biggest act of terrorism in world history, and, and it destroyed the German economy, and the German chancellor allowed it. So uh, does the government have the power? They think they have. The United States was so incompetent, the military couldn't even destroy four pipelines. They only destroyed three. So uh, the people have the power, and at the end of the day, they're going to do what's in their best interest, and and that's protect their family and protect their home. For the most important viewer question here, uh, we have the question, can you please tell us if your dog Fax knows finance? Fax has a problem. Fax, uh, because of that uh underwater volcano that blew up near Tonga in January of 2022. We've had unusual weather since then, lots and lots and lots of rain. The wine crop in the south of France has been destroyed, and I mean destroyed. I had 300 bottles of wine last year, and if I picked the grapes one by one, in my vineyard this year, I couldn't make one bottle of wine. So we've had three uh, thunder and lightning storms in the last two weeks. And the first time it happened, I, I, I woke up about two o'clock in the morning and I had two paws right on my chest. And I, I, I couldn't remember, I hadn't been drinking or anything, but I couldn't remember going to bed and having the paws there. But I had two paws and I looked a little closer and it was Fax. And Fax was quivering because he was so scared of the thunder and lightning. So I said, come on, pooch. So he jumped up on the bed and I talked to Fax and I held Fax for an hour and for an hour 
he quivered. And then a week later, we had another thunder lightning storm. I woke up at midnight, same thing, two paws on my chest. Come on, Fax. Fax jumped up. He wasn't quivering this time. He just wanted to be near me to make sure I was okay. And the lightning and the thunder stopped after an hour. He, he went back to his own bed. And the third time we had a, a storm, he just came up and slept next to the bed. So that's the only progress. But I, I don't think Fax cares. He knows that that uh, I, I will protect him and take care of him. So he, he doesn't care what bonds do. Fantastic. If our viewers are interested in learning more of your work, where can they find you, Bob? Three to one goals, three to one energy. And I've got about 10 books on Amazon. And regardless of what kind of books you read, everything from short fiction to to financial books, to aviation books, to military books, I've got a very wide range of writing that I've done. And I'll be real candid, it, it's pretty good writing. Well, Bob, thank you so much for your time. It's always great to have you and God bless. Thank you. Have a good week and I look forward to seeing you again. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.